Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to continue on with this kind of mini December series of Swedish beer reviews that I'm doing for you. And this was a brewery that was actually recommended to me by one of my brewers, Ulf Lindström. So quite interested to see what this one's like. So we're going to go up to Mulnike once again, which is also the home to Popol's Breaggery. But we're going to visit Rodeneus Breaggery. And this one is their Alter Ego, which is a German style alt beer. It's a style that I really do quite enjoy, but you don't come across them all that often. So really interested to see what this brewery is like and apparently they do kind of focus on brewing sort of older style of beers rather than the sort of new wave of things that's come out of America so this should be a really quite interesting beer I've not reviewed an alt beer for you in quite some time so very much looking forward to this beer but anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you do want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual websites are in the video description below that's the brewery website the links to my future reviews that I'll do from Rodinaeus this is the very first time I'm trying one of their beers. There's also the Facebook page for the channel so please like it and also my untapped profiles down there as well so feel free to add me as a friend on there. To my Swedish viewers I do apologise if any of the Swedish pronunciations aren't quite right. I'm still learning Swedish but if you do want to let me know some other Swedish beers to have a look at then I'll definitely look into that so please comment below and let me know some other ones to take a look at. So anyway, Rodinaeus were founded in 2013 and they're based in Mölnike which is near Gothenburg. It's about maybe three hours or so to the north of me here in Lund. But the brewery is owned by Henrik Jonsson and the head brewer is Eskil Gröning. And apparently um, he was an avid home brewer before he got into brewing professionally. But the pair had plans to establish their own brew pub together and this came to fruition when they finally found the site in which the brewery resides today. But soon after they began brewing, Neil Surlian joined the brewery. He actually asked one day if he could help with the bottling and then he never went away really. They just kept, they kept him on and he's now the brewing assistant I guess. But both Eskil and Niels are actually graduates of the Ludvika Brewing School, which is, I think, I'm not sure exactly where it is, but I've heard the name a couple of times, and it does seem to throw out quite a few interesting craft brewers, so hopefully their beer is really good. But they say, the company says that they want to operate locally so they can get to know all of their customers properly, so I guess this is probably a beer you're not going to find too much outside of Sweden. But they also want to focus on brewing older styles of beer to help bring them back into the sort of mainstream of craft beer, so really just so that people don't forget the old styles. As and as I said, an alt beer, with one of, in, in terms of the new wave of craft breweries, it's quite difficult to actually find a brewery that does an alt beer. They are around, but it's not one of the more common styles. A lot of these craft breweries these days want to do, you know, the huge hoppy IPAs or the big double IPAs, Imperial Reds and Stouts and all these things. But an alt beer, and even like Bock beers and things like that, the old German beers are quite difficult to find. So really cool to find a brewery that actually wants to do these styles of beers. And as I say, I really, I used to live in Germany, so I really do love these kind of more odd styles of German beer. But anyway, that's your brief, brief bit about the Rodinaeus Breaggery. So just to list the other beers you can get from these guys, obviously you have this one here which is the Alter Ego, the Alp beer. They have the Americansk Bitter, Bourbon Mash beer, California Common which is a steam beer, similar to the sort of anchor beer you'll get. Um, organic Pilsner, Ecologus Winterbier, India Paleo, Lager beer, Porter and also a Saison beer. And I think it was actually the Porter that Ulf Lindstrom recommended to me but I couldn't get it through Sistium Blog it so hopefully that's one I can have a look at in the future but without further ado let's actually get stuck into this beer. Really looking forward to this one. There's a little bit on the side in Swedish and I did read it. It was just telling you a little bit about the Alp beer style and where it came from. Um, said it came from, it basically came from Bavaria, I remember, from that's from my time in Germany, but I'll let you have a little quick look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. Quite hard for you to see actually, just because of the light, so I'll put the light down, maybe you can see it a little bit better there. But it's quite a bright label this one, it's a sort of old school style, you can see um, the old sort of medieval style artwork in this thing, so you can see the hop flowers just on the side there, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but you can see you can see it not bad actually, I'm just looking what you can see in the camera, but this guy is a 4.9% alt beer. As I said, there's this little bit on the side in Swedish that tells you exactly a little bit about the uh, the alt beer style. It talks about Dusseldorf, but I, if I remember rightly, the alt beer style is one that comes from Bavaria, as most beers do actually, apart from the Dortmund pills and things like that. So let's get this guy open and we'll get on with the tasting then. So. As you can see, a nice smoky opening on this guy as we open it up. You can smell the Alt beer 
is always a big malty caramelly beer but you do get a nice little bit of German hoppy character out of this one. You can see there's a nice head just forming on that. I realised I forgot to show you the Rodineus bottle cap on this one. It's quite nice actually. It's like, it almost reminds me a little bit of some of these old uh, Da Vinci Code drawings actually. It's really really quite cool actually so I'll be keeping that one. But yeah as you can see the beer has poured a nice sort of ready copper colour. I'll just put it over there. Probably actually mahogany. Mahogany ready copper amber probably a good way to describe this beer. A little bit of a mouthful, but you can see the nice colour of this beer. I think mahogany probably is a good way. But it is copper. If I hold it to the light, it actually does appear a little bit brighter. It's got a bit more of an orange tint to it. If I move over there, you can actually see it. But it's a nice, ready, orangey copper colour, this, but some nice mahogany notes to it as well. So yeah, as you could see, though, there was a half finger of a frothy, kind of creamy coloured head on this one. Not perfectly white but it looks really nice. There's a lot of little bubbles going up towards the bottom of the head there, but some big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass as well. It looks a really nice beer. If I put my fingers behind it, you can see that it's not really transparent at all. So it looks very, very nice actually. Very much looking forward to having a go of this one. So let's give it a smell before we get stuck into it properly. Yeah, a lot of the typical out beer characteristics coming out of this one. So as you would expect, You've got a nice, big, sweet caramel malt. It's actually quite toasted as well. Nice, big, toasted caramel malt. There's a big bready character in there as well. It's quite cereally, almost like a, a German rye bread. Really does. These out beers really do remind me of that kind of aroma. But there's some nutty and woody aromas coming out of here as well. All It's all really quite infused. It does. The beer does actually smell quite boozy. But you can also pick out some sort of red fruity esters. Maybe like figs or raisins or something like that. Maybe a better way to describe that is candied fruit. But you're only getting the candied fruit if you take a, if you take a little step back from it like that and sugar it up a bit. But you can also pick out some of the German noble hops. and It's a little bit floral. Sort of Hallertau and Tetnang hops are the ones that you, you would get. There's also Hercules hops as well, which are really interesting. But this is definitely... Tetnang or Hallertau hop that's in this. Both the Tetnang and the Hallertau have a good bit of earthy character to them and you can pick that up in this beer. But yeah, it smells really nice. They actually didn't tell you on the website what hops and, uh, and malts and things they put into this beer but I would be guessing, going by the aroma, there's probably some Munich malts in there, maybe even some Vienna or something like that too. But I want to say I'm pretty sure that there's Tetnang or Hallertau hops in there. It smells really nice. There's a good bit of earthy character and there's that floral kind of smooth grassiness that comes out of this beer as well. That's a definite, there's a definitely a German hop in here. But yeah, as I say, the malt base in this smells really nice. Caramel malts, slightly toasted, a little bit of bready character, quite like German rye bread, but there's also a woody and kind of nutty infusion to this. So yeah, as I always say with the beers, do give them a smell before you try them, but I really want to get stuck into this beer now. So this is the Alter Ego beer, which is a German Alt beer, 4.9% from Rodenes Brigeri, which is in Munlike, near uh, Gothenburg, Jotobori in Sweden. Skål! Mm. Tell you something, they definitely have got the German mouthfeel this one right. Yeah, it's got this big bready mouthfeel to it. It's it's really nice. It has it's very wet and comes in very smooth, and you get a lot of there's a lot of cereally character coming out of this beer actually. As I always say with these beers, sugar them around your mouth a little bit so that you get all the flavours, so that your palate totally adjusts it before you actually start to think about the components. But yeah, this one, you really do have to let your palate adjust to it a bit. The most prominent component of the flavour to me actually is the cereally malt base in this one. It's quite interesting. Usually the German Alt beers I find are, are a lot more forward on the caramel and quite a bit more boozy actually. Mm. 
but yeah, this is nice and quite enjoyable. You really do have to let your palate adjust to it though. As I say, when the beer comes in, your tongue is just blanketed by this big kind of cereally bready flavour and it actually comes out as quite dry and a little bit bitter on in the middle of your tongue. So it's really it's really quite interesting that but once the flavour progresses a bit more you start to get some of the sweet caramel notes out there. It's a little bit toasted as well which help, it kind of adds to that sort of dark slightly bitter flavour that you're getting from the uh, from the, the malt base in this one. Yeah, there's definitely a bit of a sort of biscuity, a slightly sweeter biscuity character to this as well but as I say the malt base is really dominated by that sort of cereally or almost rye bready flavour. It's, it's quite nice actually but it reminds me a lot of some of the English bitter beers you get back home this. It's quite dark and it's almost, I don't know, it maybe even could be just a little bit smoky actually. There's a big bitter character just lying there right in the middle of the tongue. Yeah. I'm sure it actually said on the Sistian Bologit website that this was a smoked beer. But their website says it's an alt beer, but there is definitely an element of, of some sort of really dark smokiness to it. It could well be that the cereal, the malt on this one is roasted or something like that, but there is a definite very dark and very bitter presence in the middle of your palate, so just pay attention to that. Mm. Yeah, so within that malt base you can pick up a little bit of a, a woody and kind of nutty flavour in there. It's, it's really interesting and there are some fruity esters coming out around the front curve of the tongue. If you go just behind it a little bit there's some kind of there's a little bit of an oily mouthfeel and that's where you're getting some of these fruity esters out of the beer. I want to say it's kind of a, a slightly reddish fruit, maybe some figs, not really quite not really any sharper like raisins or plums or anything like that, but there's maybe some sort of candied fruit. I always describe the candied fruit flavours has been a little bit like Haribo and you can just get a little bit of these kind of Haribo flavours just behind the very front curve of your tongue there. But yeah, around the edge of your palate you're definitely getting these German noble hop characteristics. If you go to the back corners of the palate you've got a nice smooth but slightly dry earthiness and as you move further forward it becomes just a little bit floral but then around the front of the tongue very smooth and just a light kind of grassy flavour there. It's it's quite an interesting one this. is different from any of the other alt beers I've tried actually from Germany and I think it's maybe just that smoky element or the prominence of the, the sort of cereally bitter character in this beer. It's quite nice. Mm. But yeah, the beer actually, I would say that as the flavour progresses the beer does get a little bit smoother. But in terms of the mouthfeel of this one I would say it's mid-bodied, the carbonation it does have just a little bit of a, 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 a tingle to it, if you like, and that helps bring out some of the, the cereally characters. It also helps with a little bit with the, the aromatic things from these German noble hops that are in this beer. It's slightly oily, but at the same time it's quite a wet. It has a very sort of German kind of Brauhaus beer mouthfeel. It, has, it definitely has that sort of thing. It reminds me of the mouthfeel of a lot of these Dunkel beers that you get in Germany. It really does have that kind of very smooth yet very wet and drinkable mouthfeel to it. But it's got a good malty presence as I was saying, there's a good bit of dry and bitter character from that malt thing in as well, but there's a good little bit of sweetness in there that comes out as the flavour progresses, but there's a good presence from the hops too. A bit dry from the earthiness in the back corners of the palate, but it's smoother around the kind of front of the tongue there. So yeah, overall this is a really interesting out beer. It's not like any of the German ones that I remember. This one is a bit, um, the, the sort of unusual smoky character in this one makes it quite interesting and quite quirky so if you do to me it comes across as being a bit more of a hybrid between perhaps a bitter like an English bitter and a German out beer because it does have elements of both flavours but then it could well be that the part in the middle of the palate really is smoked actually and I'm sure that I read on the Sistian Bologit website they were describing it as a smoked beer so I'm not quite sure what to make of this one but I can tell you that it is a good beer and you know you can debate styles all day but the fact is it's a good beer so I would recommend that you give it a try and it's one that definitely has tested my palate and as a beer reviewer that's always what you want so hopefully in the future I can go back to Rodinius Brewery and actually have a look at some of their other beers. I think Ulf recommended the Porter so hopefully I can get that one but I haven't it wasn't available 
on the uh, on the website when I tried it. So hopefully I can get it sometime soon. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. If you like English bitters and you like German alt beers, and even if you like smoked beers, this one is perhaps a, an interesting combination of all three. It really has little elements of all that. You can debate about styles all day, like I said, but the fact is, this is a good beer. So go and check out Rodinius Bregery, who are from Mulnike, which is near Gothenburg, of course. Some really interesting beers coming out of Gothenburg, actually. So do go and check out the city. But I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. If you do happen to have tried this beer before, please let me know your own thoughts on it. Always interesting to hear from you guys. And to my Swedish viewers, do let me know some other Swedish beers you'd like me to try. But in the meantime, until my next beer review, there will be more Swedish ones coming. But thank you, and please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff, and I will catch you soon. Slange.